Uh, thank you for joining for another DuPont Molly Coat webinar. We have Will Thick, an application specialist, who will run us through Molly Coat greases. Will, uh, take it away. So before we dive in, we're going to take a second to review um, some tribology um, notes here. So we have tribology, which is the science of friction and wear between moving surfaces. This can really be broken down into three separate friction regimes. Uh, these include boundary friction, which are typically like press fit uh, interfaces or other slow moving uh, high load type applications. And on the other side, we have hydrodynamic friction, which are typically fast moving parts with uh, lighter loads. So these are uh, can commonly be known as things like bearings or uh, really fast sliding uh, surfaces. And then in the middle, you have your mixed friction, which really encompasses um, a little bit of both. So usually moderate loads, moderate speeds, or different combinations that allow for certain levels of contact and hydrodynamics. So you get some separation, but on the occasional, in, in certain occasions, you'll get a little bit of contact as well. On the right over here, we have our Molly Coat wheel. Um, this allows you to know what you need to identify your application. You can see there's load environment, temperature, and speed, and also a reminder of what different functions a lubricant has. And around the outside, we have the six different product families that Molly Coat um, uses. We have creases, pastes, oils, compounds, dispersions, and anti-friction coatings. But today we're just going to talk about greases. Earlier I mentioned the functions of a lubricant. Here they are, separating surfaces, commonly known one as reducing wear, reducing friction. Then you also have things like managing contamination, preventing rust and corrosion, uh, heat transfer, as well as power uh, transmission. So when it comes to selecting a lubricant, uh, we lean heavily on this LETS acronym, we call it. So load environment, temperature, and speed. Uh, these are four of the things that we really need to know in order to spec in the correct lubricant for that application. So you can see in this image over here, we have the part and the counterpart, and then between it, you have your lubricant, or in this case, we have our molly coat here. For the load, that's really just, you know, the load on either side of the part that you're trying to lubricate. Then you have uh, the environmental stuff, which is kind of really encompassing everything outside of the low temperature and speed. So things like corrosive, of environments or other chemicals that might be in contact, the different shrub substrate materials taking into account various compatibility aspects. And then you have temperature, which is pretty self-explanatory, uh, usually a minimum and maximum temperature, and then the center limit for the temperature where you plan on operating in most cases. And then there's the speed. So the relative speed between those two moving services is also very important. So diving a little deeper into greases, um, kind of looking at the formulation here, we have three things really that it can be broken down into. We have the base oil where it makes up about 70 to 90 percent of the the total composition. Then you have the thickener which is somewhere between 10 and 30 percent and then you have your additives which are one to five percent of the formulation. Uh, as you can see looking at this performance pyramid for base fluids uh, you can start down at more typical mineral oils, polyalpha olefins and then as you move up to the top you got your PAGs, your silicones, PFPEs um, and you gain performance as you go up that pyramid. But also, you know, it's a trade-off typically with cost. Uh, on the thickener side, there's a whole a whole bunch of them. One of the more common ones is lithium, but there's also things like polyurea, uh, calcium complex, PTFE. And the additive's job really is to do whatever extra thing that you're really wanting that lubricant to do, whether it be um, extreme pressure, corrosion, even uh, anti-wear, really tackifiers if you need it to really stay in place. So that's what that's there for. Molico actually has over 170 different formulations for grease with a loan. So it can get really complex and uh, overwhelming at times. So why use a grease? Well, we kind of talked about the functions of a lubricant, but this is a little more detailed. So preventing wear, reducing friction, um, it can act as a sealant. You can use it primarily to uh, prevent rust and corrosion in some cases, use it for dampening noise, help with the general feel of, for example, like knobs and buttons and vehicles. It allow certain lubricants, including greases, can be tolerant of different contaminations, uh, different applications that inhibit oxidation. So you can use them to make sure that things stay in place, resist leakage, form a barrier against contaminations, resist physical um, removal. And uh, there's a many other outside of these as well. So earlier I'd mentioned that greases can become very complex. This kind of breaks it down. Uh, there's 
way more than this, but it just kind of shows uh, as you keep going down it through the base fluid, there's mineral oils, synthetic oils, vegetable oils, and those can be broken up many more times. Same thing for thickeners. You have your soap category, your non-soap category, and so many more past this. You've got lithium soaps, lithium complex, um, aluminum. There's millions of possible different combinations is what I'm getting at here. That's why application engineers are here, lubricant specialists. We're here to answer any questions that you might have. Another thing that's worth highlighting, it gets overlooked often, is uh, compatibility with greases. So looking at compatibility, um, for example, with just just between greases and uh, elastomers, for example. Usually these are sealing type applications where you might not be able to allow for uh, shrinkage or you might be able to allow for a little bit of swell. There is an actual chart here that is kind of general good versus bad, but really it varies depending on the specific application. As I said just a second ago, if you're trying to seal, you definitely don't want your your o-ring to shrink and if you're um, trying to seal you might actually want a little bit of swell induced which we do have some products that swell certain elastomers depending on that requirement here we have a grease consistency guide um, it kind of shows the sweet spot where molly coat plays um, the one twos and threes we do have some products that are also zero or double zero and single zero but this kind of just aligns it with specific applications as well as giving a food consistency just as a reference. So an NLGI-1 would be something like tomato paste, NLGI-2 more like peanut butter. And you can see as the NLGI number goes up, we get into uh, thicker or more firm uh, types of lubricants. The ones, twos, and threes are going to address most of the, the standard applications that you might come across. In, in order to address 80%, we say our 80-20 rule, in, in order to address 80% of those applications, we select a few different products that are used as a, a starting point. Here for multi-purpose greases, we have both mineral oils and synthetic PAOs. So our BR2 high-performance grease is a great starting point for any typical application. And then we have the multi-loop synthetic high-performance grease, which is an HPM certified uh, grease that can be used on many different applications. And then as you start going into specialized areas like high loads, then we have other uh, different go-to products like our G4700 and our long-term 2 plus. Again, food grades, we got uh, various different food grade greases with different strengths and weaknesses. But here's two that we point people to um, right, off the, right off the bat. Um, High shear and high speed greases, our G2008 and 2088 use synergistic combinations of solids in order to maintain the, the life of the, the substrates that you're using, but also under that uh, high shear and high speed type of application. And then we have line, a line of uh, no bleed to low bleed greases for those applications where you might not want oil bleeding out, things like knobs and switches. And then for the other 20% of the applications we have are advanced lubricating greases. Um, these are more of the top of the pyramid style base fluids. So um, silicones and PFPEs where they're typically used in really wide temperature applications as well as applications where compatibility is uh, very important. This is another chart, it does the same type of thing, the 80-20 rule, but it has a bit more detail in here. So um, the different types of applications that you might use a multi-purpose grease on, roller bearings, plane bearings, slides, guides, and the list goes on. Same thing for each of the other products here. So um, if you want to take a deeper look at this, feel free to pause and see which of these uh, might be a good fit for you. And then it's worth highlighting that we have many different package sizes. This is not all the package sizes that we have. We actually do have some, some products that come in pillow packs, we call them, so six gram pillow packs. We also do anything from 50 gram bottles all the way up to 180 kilogram drums. We got products that are in different grease cartridge sizes pails, toothpaste style tubes, 150 grams. So just highlighting that there, there is a package size out there that fits um, every application. And we do have a product that will work for you. Thank you.